In this video, we are going to discuss a very important controller in control systems. So, that is proportional integral derivative controller. As the name indicates, the output of this controller is the combination of all proportional controller, integral controller and derivative controller. All the advantages of that controllers are going to come here and the disadvantages are overcame here. So, that means by here in case of derivative controller, we are having steady state error problem. In case of integral controller, we are having stability problem. So, those two problems also going to overcome by this proportional integral differential controller generally called as PID controller. So, now we will see how we can analyze that controller, how we can sketch that block diagram of control system with PID controller. So, now we will see for any controller from initial class of controllers itself we are discussing that the output of controller we are representing with u of t and input for any controller is error signal e of t. So, your output must be proportional to proportional controller integral controller and differential controller. So, we need to combine all the controllers. In case of proportional controller, the output must be proportional to error signal. In case of integral controller, the output must be proportional to integral of error signal. In case of differential controller, the output must be proportional to differentiation of error signal. But in case of proportional integral differential controller, the output must be proportional to the combination of error signal, integral of error signal and differentiation of error signal. Now, to take out this proportionality, I need to use coefficients here, I need to use constraints here. So, u of t is equal into to equate e of t, I am writing kp because that is proportional controller part and to equate integration part, so I am using ki into e of t. So, similarly to equate the differentiation part, I am writing that constant as kd, so which is nothing but differential constant d by dt of et. So, this will be your output of PID controller where u of t equivalent to kp into e of t plus ki into e of t plus kd into d by dt of e of t. This is integral e of t. So, now where kp is the proportionality constant, ki is the integral constant and kd is the differentiation constant. Now, the thing is we want to draw a block diagram of the control system with the PID controller. In control system block diagrams, if you want to represent any controller, how we can represent means we can represent with transfer function. So, we need a transfer function of PID controller now. We are having output and input in the form of time, that means in terms of time. If you need transfer function, then you need to convert this time domain into frequency domain or S domain. So, that is why to calculate transfer function further, I am going to convert this time domain into S domain by taking Laplace transform. So, let Laplace transform on both sides. On both sides, if I am taking Laplace transform, then u of t is equivalent to u of s, this is equivalent to kp into e of s plus k i by s into e of s because integration like that k d into s into e of s. If differentiation is there, Laplace transform will give you multiplication in s. If integration is there, Laplace transform will give you denominator s. So, this is your u of s. Now, I am taking common of e of s here, e of s into k p plus k i by s plus k d into s. So, now here 
u of s is equal to e of s into kp plus ki by s kd into s this is what you are getting after taking laplace transform why you taking laplace transform to derive the transfer function how will get transfer function the definition of transfer function for any system is output transform by input transform so here for a controller output is u of t input is error signal output transform means u of s input transform means e of s so by considering u of s by e of s then you are going to get the transfer function of the system so u of s by e of s is equivalent to kp plus ki by s plus kd into s this is what we are getting so this is the transfer function of PID controller. If you want any simplification for this, you just take common of KP 1 plus KI by KP into S plus KD by KP into S. So, you just consider KI by KP as I am just considering like this. You can see 1 plus 1 by T i into S plus T d into S. I am just considering like this, where T i is equal to K p by K i and T d is equal to K d by K p. You can see T d is equal to K d by K p. T i is equal to K p by K i. If you substitute kp by ki here you will get this same so the transfer function of pid controller is equal to kp into 1 plus 1 by tis plus td into s now with this i am going to draw the block diagram now so block diagram of control system will contains the input transform first and after that if i want to add this pid controller in what sense I can add means by adding transfer function we can say we are adding the PID controller this is the transfer function KP into 1 plus 1 by TIS plus TD into S. So input is E of S output is U of S. So here I am taking gain. So this is C of S output and negative feedback. So this is your control system with the PID controller. So up to here this is PID controller. This is your PID controller. So here if you observe, if, if you observe this transfer function, if you observe this transfer function, I can write this transfer function as KP into S plus KI plus kd into s divided by s. <coughs> I am just cross multiplying and writing this s square not s. If you observe these two, it introduces two s terms in numerator that means two zeros are introduced and coming to denominator one s term is there. It introducing one s term in denominator that means it increasing the type. So, it is increasing a pole at 0, it introducing pole at 0. But you can see the transfer function of this, I am just simplified this controller's transfer function. So, by this transfer function, you can say in denominator s term is there, that means the type number is going to increase, that means we are introducing a pole at origin. The meaning of denominator S means we are introducing a pole at origin. And we are having two S terms in numerator. Two S terms in numerator. One is S term, one is S square term. Two different S terms. By that you will get two, two coefficients that means two zeros. So we are introducing two zeros. We are introducing one pole at origin. 1 0 can compensate 1 pole 
another zero will increase the stability of the system generally pid controller is used to increase the stability as well as to decrease the steady state error by increasing the type number of the system by introducing pole at origin you can increase the type number of the system that implies steady state error will be decreased by introducing the zeros in numerator by increasing the zeros you can increase the stability of the system previously also in pd controller pi controller also we introduced one zero at numerator but that zero is going to compensate with introduced pole but here two zeros are introduced and one pole is introduced at origin so one zero can compensate this one pole at origin another zero will leads to increase in stability of the system so like this way this pid controller is going to show more stability and reduced steady state error this is about proportional integral and derivative controller